It is time for some bonus material. You may have thought that what we just talked about was really weird, but now let's go all the way. Let's talk about some derivative rules that are hiding in the subject of topology, one of my favorites. Topology is the study of abstract spaces, and one of the things that we think about when we're working with spaces is the boundary of a space. Let's say you've got a space S. Its boundary is denoted with this funny sort of scripty D symbol. I don't know, what do we call it? I just call it the boundary of S. So, what does any of that have to do with anything that we've been talking about with derivatives? Let's see some examples. What's the boundary of the disk in a plane? It's maybe not so easy to define rigorously, but intuitively, Look, it's just the circle. It's just the set of points that are, well, on the boundary of that disk. Something similar holds for a polygon in the plane. The boundary is a set of edges. Now, it gets more interesting when you move to 3D. What's the boundary of a solid ball? It is the sphere, the set of points that are right at the boundary of that ball. What is the boundary of a solid cube? Well, it consists of all those flat faces. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six. What is the boundary of a donut, a solid torus? Well, let's see. The boundary is kind of like the glazing on the outside of that donut. That is called a two-dimensional torus. It's kind of cool. Moving down a dimension, what is the boundary of a path? either in the line or in three-dimensional space, well, it just consists of the two endpoints of the path. Okay, that's the notion of a boundary. That's what we use that scripty D symbol for. But we're not done, because you can do things with spaces, algebraic things, such as taking a product of two spaces. This is called a Cartesian product. And it's not that hard to see in some simple examples. For example, the product of two intervals is going to be a square. The product of an interval with a disk is going to be a cylinder. What's the product of a circle with a circle? Aha, that's one of these two-dimensional tori. Very interesting. Now, this gets harder to see in higher dimensions. What's the product of an interval with a solid cube? Ooh, that's going to be a four-dimensional cube, which is, interestingly enough, the same thing as the product of a square with itself. Hmm. But you can see, in higher dimensions, this gets really difficult to visualize. Now, we're not done. That's the product. There are other operations on spaces as well, such as sums, something like an addition operation that is related to the notion of a union. For example, if we think about the boundary of a solid cube, then that consists of the sum of six squares. I'm really just putting them all together in a union operation. I could think of that as something like addition. That's kind of cool. And it brings us to our goal, which is a product rule for computing boundaries. If you want to compute the boundary of a product of two spaces, you can do so by parts, shall we say. Here's the rule. The boundary of A times B, where A and B are spaces, is the boundary of A times B plus A times the boundary of B. Hmm, that looks awfully familiar. I wonder what does this mean? Well, consider a solid cylinder. That is the product of a disk, A, with an interval, B. What's the boundary of a solid cylinder? Well, it comes in pieces. You've got the stuff on the side, and then you've got the two caps on the end. Look at how this product rule applies. If I take the boundary of the disk, boundary of A, I get a circle. Take that circle times B, the interval, and I get the side of the cylinder. 
what happens when I take A, the disk, times the boundary of B, the interval? I get a pair of disks. Those are the two caps on the end. Adding them together gives me the boundary of the full cylinder. That's really an example of a product rule. Now, I'll leave it to you to think about how this applies to things like squares or cubes or even things like a solid torus. Very, very cool example of something like a differentiation rule in a very distinct subject. Now, what this all means, what it truly means, is that derivatives are deep. They are much deeper than you think they are. This is bonus material. You don't need to know anything about topology. But if you go on to multivariable calculus, by the time you get to the end, you will remember what we have seen here, and you will have an aha moment.